Humans love to show off. It seems hardwired into our DNA. Lincoln Continental. Would you have any gray poupon? But of course. Ah. The 1955 Cadillac. To quote my favorite musical of all time, The Producers, if you've got it, flaunt it. But what happened to these elegant sculptures cast in exotic metals and materials? Let's talk about it. Hood ornaments can actually be traced all the way back to the ancient Egyptians. King Tut was said to have had a falcon at the front of his chariot to bring him good luck. Similarly, the Babylonians believed that placing a mermaid at the front of their ships would keep nature calm and grant them safe journeys across the sea. But enough about boats and chariots. Let's talk about cars. Automotive design changes quickly. But in the early 1910s, cars traditionally had radiators with a cap at the top. The Boyce Moto Meter Company saw a market for a radiator cap that incorporated a temperature gauge, so the driver would know if their car was about to boil over. In 1912, they patented their idea, selling them to anyone that would buy it. They later got orders from car makers themselves, as well as dealerships offering them as a dealer add-on. This was neat. However, car makers wanted to stand out from the crowd, so they asked the Boyce Moto Meter Company to incorporate the company's logo into the design of the temperature gauge. That way, it didn't look like an off-the-shelf radiator cap that anyone could buy. It looked special. But then, car design changed in the mid-1930s, focusing more on aerodynamic shapes and smaller radiators. With those smaller radiators now in fashion, the temperature gauges were moved to the inside of the car, along with the speedometer, tachometer, and things like that. However, car buyers had fallen in love with the elegant designs of radiator caps. So, car makers kept the hood ornaments even though they no longer had an actual purpose. This trend carried on all the way through the 1960s. There are hundreds of different hood ornaments from different manufacturers. They had style and presence and were genuine pieces of art. Why don't we see them as much today? Well, if you know anything about this video series, you can probably guess the culprit. That's right. Steve Buscemi. Nah, just kidding. The government. The government took him away. Come on. The oldest restriction I could find came in a fall of 1967 issue of Changing Times. The government began their crackdown on pedestrian safety, and one of the first things that had to go was solid hood ornaments. Hood ornaments could no longer be solid mounted to the hood. They must have some kind of breakaway, bendable, or spinning system just in case you struck a pedestrian. A popular solution was to make the ornaments spring-loaded, lessening personal injury, but popping right back into place after that poor sucker rolls off your hood. Rolls-Royce even invented a motorized system that retracts the hood ornament if it experiences more than 22 pounds of force. Europe followed suit in 1974, setting similar regulations against hood ornaments. This was the beginning of the end. Hood ornaments were still semi-used regularly throughout the 1980s, but with each passing year, there were less and less. So where does that leave us today? Well, there are still some vehicles that use hood ornaments, so they're not completely dead but they do have to conform to very strict safety standards. They must be easily breakable in the event of a crash, and they must be made of special materials. All of this is just too much for some automakers, failing to see the real point in making them at all. Not to mention that most of today's cars use their front emblems for radar sensors, which doesn't quite work with traditional hood ornaments. I hope you enjoyed my latest video essay. If you have any topic for me to cover next, please let me know in the comments. But until next time, Steve Buscemi.